Hello and welcome to the online worship service of the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church for June 13th and 14th of 2424. It's good to be with you. My name is Pastor Tom. Pastor Leah will be joining us. Uh, Susie Nally played our prelude and Angel Dobson did our video preparation. Thank you for being with us today in worship. God bless us each and every one. We worship together in person on Saturday evenings at 4.45 here at the church and at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings here at the church. You're welcome to come. Uh, we welcome everyone and we enjoy worshiping together. On Thursdays, we have a grief share ministry every Thursday at 10 a.m. here at the church. Everyone in the community is welcome to come to that um, group, the, the support group as well. We also have an Alzheimer's caregivers support group, which meets next on Friday, July the 26th at 10 a.m. here at the church. This is open for everyone in the community. Anyone that you know of, you can share this information. Anyone you know of who is struggling with a loved one, who is struggling with dementia or um, Alzheimer's disease, it's a wonderful support group and a lot of information and, and is exchanged and uh, it's a wonderful opportunity. We serve the community in many ways also. Uh, one of our major ministries is in connection with the All Souls Episcopal Church and on Tuesdays we go there and prepare items to be distributed to folks who come on Wednesdays and uh, we would participate, we participate with All Souls and a number of other agencies, Harry Chapin Food Bank and a number of others as well to provide services for people who come who are in need. If you'd like to participate with us, please let us know. Come on Tuesdays to help us prepare or on Wednesdays if you would like to speak to folks to figure out how to share and serve. We are online in several platforms. We have a Facebook page, we have a YouTube channel, we also have a church website. You can see that in yellow in the middle. All of those have information that you, know, you can find and, and use and share. We also have a giving platform which is safe and secure. It's through the My Well Giving app. You can see that address listed. Um, if you enter that uh, web address, you will go to their uh, portal and you'll see our information for our church, Good Shepherd United Methodist Church of North Fort Myers. You fill out the information and submit the form and uh, you can then give as you would like. Thank you for being with us today in church. Uh, it's good to be in worship together. I'm now going to invite Pastor Leah to come and read for us our psalm for the week, Psalm 24. Pastor Leah. Good morning, my loving church family and friends. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For God founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek God, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your gates, Lift up your heads, lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
come to our time of joys and concerns. Um, we want to uh, extend our sympathies to the family of Noel Watkins. We received a call from Adriana this past week that Noel passed away on July the 6th up in Ontario, Canada. Uh, Noel and Adriana had been longtime residents in the Lake Fairways community here in North Fort Myers, and Noel was beloved here at Good Shepherd as well. Um, he had been away, he and Adriana had been away from us for five or six years since his diagnosis of health, and so we want to extend our sympathies to the Watkins family. We also want to extend our prayers for all who are affected by the hurricane barrel, now tropical storm, now depression barrel, uh, as it struck across the Caribbean, entered into Texas, and is now crossed through the Midwest and up into Maine. Many effects, uh, many, much damage, uh, of everything from tornadoes to rain to flooding to the effects of the hurricane itself. Uh, many prayers for them. We want to lift up Jim Bobe, who is going to the MD Anderson Cancer Treatment Center in Houston, Texas for cancer treatments. Beth Ferris, who has asked for prayers as her kidney disease has gotten more worse, has gotten worser, and she's on new medications. Lori Schultz, who has upcoming surgery. Marjol Smith, who is suffering with anemia and low blood counts and is seeing doctors for her, for her care. Uh, Debbie Kajarsik, who is at Gulf Coast Medical Center. Uh, she has developed a seizure disorder following a stroke last year. Uh, she did not have a stroke recently. This was not a stroke, but it was a seizure. And so she's on new medications uh, and she's being monitored and she will have to have some speech therapy and some balance therapy to return to her strength that she had. Dora Dismeyer uh, has been having back pain and um, as she's been going through scans and tests, they've uh, uncovered several other concerning health issues, which will also need to be addressed. But we want to lift up Dora in this time of, of testing and of um, to discover what the medical issues are and what treatment possibilities exist. If you have a joy or a concern, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. You can contact the church through our webpage, through our phone, through email. We'd be glad to hear from you. You can even message us through Facebook as well. Let us join our hearts together in the prayers for the people and followed by the Lord's Prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks and praise for your faithfulness and steadfast love, even as we struggle in our own unbelief and find ourselves surrounded by doubts and fears. For, Lord, we hear many voices, many opinions, and we find it hard to know what is right and true. Gracious Savior, help us to know what is the right way to live according to God's holy word. Shine your light into our lives that we might emerge from the darkness and walk with you. Forgive us when we walk in ways that please us, make our lives easier at the expense of others. When we prefer our imaginations and deceptions to your word, help us, merciful God, to look beyond knowing Jesus only as a good teacher, a righteous and holy person. Forgive us when we fail to understand and accept that Jesus Christ is truly the promised Messiah, your Son. Help us, Holy Spirit, to open our hearts that we might be led and taught in the ways of the kingdom of God. Forgive us when we seek to please others more than we seek to love and please you, O Lord. Enable us now to repent, to turn, 
to accept your forgiveness and to live a new life in you that we might share as we have received, that we might love as we are loved by you, O Lord. Hear the prayers which we now raise in the silence of our hearts. Hear these in all our prayers which are offered in the name of Jesus as we pray together as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks for all the gifts and tithes and offerings which are given to the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church. It is by your support that we are able to be in ministry. Uh, There are many people who attend worship weekly who make gifts to the church. There's also 70, nearly maybe 70 to 100 of you who are online who enjoy our worship services, and we would invite you also to participate in supporting our ministry and our mission into the world. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being with us today. Our scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter, verse 14 through 29. King Herod heard about this, For Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. And that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said, he is Elijah. And still others claimed he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. For Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. The king said to the girl, Ask me for anything you want, and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, Whatever you ask... I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once, the girl hurried into the king with a request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed. But because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl. She gave it to her mother. On hearing this, 
John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today's sermon is called, A Good Friend Dies. A Good Friend Dies. Honestly, this is one of the least favorite scriptures that I ever read from the lectionary. It tells of one of the most terrible, unjust, dishonorable, and reprehensible events in history. It really is the root of the saying, having your head handed to you on a platter. Yes, this really did happen. Even non-biblical historical sources concur with the report from the Gospel of Mark. In the text, we see many issues. We see King Herod's deep paranoia, his misunderstanding of resurrection, his questions, his doubts, his fears, his vulnerabilities, his foolishness, his arrogance, and his odd sense of honor to his oath yet a complete disregard for human life. Herod is the human condition. Without the good news of Jesus Christ, Herod is every one of us in the whole world is all wrapped up in Herod. Herod is many people with or without his power and political position, He is very, very real, very alive, very present among us. John the Baptist is his innocent victim. Jesus, his disciples, John and his disciples, and all of us, all of us bear this suffering. We are all stuck with the question From this event, why do bad things happen to good people? Have you ever thought about that question? Well, we need to be honest, I think, to start with some of our assumptions about God and about our lives, about our deaths. A common assumption is that, you know, if I'm a good person, God will take care of me. God will bless me. Nothing bad will even happen to me. I just got to have the right karma. I have to have the right juju. I have to be the right kind of positive person in the world. And then all the good things will happen because I'm putting out good vibes, good energy. Well, then the inverse is also true. You know, those are the bad people. Those are the people who have bad karma and bad feelings, bad energy. And so God will... Punish them, because that's what they deserve. Well, you know, to be honest with you, this story throws all of that out the window. Because you see, John the Baptist was the most righteous and holy person next to Jesus in Palestine at this time of the story. Herod was the very worst person that we could imagine in Palestine in the world at this time. John suffers. Herod enjoys the good life. An overarching storyline is throughout the Bible that you have to recognize. It is of people who do suffer, yet refuse to let go of their faith In their refusal to let go of their faith, they actually realize a deeper sense of God's love and grace and strength in their lives in amazing ways. I'd invite you to read the book. Read the whole Bible. Don't let your assumptions keep you from the truth. The stories are never about God making it easy for faithful people to live in this world. The stories are of people, faithful people, struggling. 
and of God being present with them and leading them into a new understanding, a new relationship, into new opportunities that they could not imagine or achieve on their own. Only through faithfulness to a completely faithful and loving God do we actually realize God's purpose for our lives. Well, then the question of purpose. That's the question that next arises. Does everything actually happen for a reason? Did God cause this tragedy or that event to be part of God's grand plan and purpose for a life? Many people say some version of this when they're struggling with this big question of why. They say things like, oh, this is all part of God's plan. Uh, it's actually a gentle shifting of blame for life onto somebody else, particularly God. God's shoulders are very broad. God can accept any blame we want to try to dump on him. But God's plan is that all people would be reconciled to God. God's desire is for creation, for Eden, to be reestablished. That there would be peace and plenty, prosperity, trust, love, obedience, a covenant, a communion between God and humanity. That is God's plan. Because you see, God is a loving God who desires only the very best for each and every one of us. However, God also gave humanity, all of us, a free will. And we get to make choices. We accept, we have accepted, the temptation to sin and to separate ourselves from God's plan because we think we know better. We can go our own way. Ever since Eden, God has been seeking to invite us to freely accept His gift of grace, to receive reconciliation and reestablish the Eden relationship. Yes, God does have a plan. The problem is we keep missing it. We keep choosing our plan. Does God cause bad things to happen in the world? No, I really don't think so. Does God permit bad things to happen? You see, permission is part of our free will. So, yes, bad things do happen. Sometimes we initiate them directly, indirectly, but they're just part of the free will. God permits us to sin, to hurt ourselves, to hurt other people. God never causes harm to us, but God can use all events in life, good and bad, to offer us the opportunity to be reconciled back to Him. God will never forsake or abandon us. God never gives up on us ever, ever. The question is, will we give up on God or will we remain faithful to God? Now, Jesus is only mentioned in the opening verses of this scripture, but we have to remember the relationship that existed between Jesus and John. You see, they were first cousins of a similar age. John was a mentor to Jesus. As 
and where Jesus began his ministry with John's baptism. John's tragic murder, I'm sure, touches Jesus deeply, as it would any of us who have lost a loved one, one so dear, one so important to us. Jesus feels the pain of loss, the death of a dear friend, of a family member. Jesus knows sadness and pain. And if Jesus knows what it feels like, then certainly God knows what it feels like. So the key for us is to always realize that God feels our pain and suffering and grief and is with us, right beside us, willing to hold our hand, willing to reach out, willing to give us a shoulder, willing to help us through. And yes, we know even the rest of the story. Yes, we know the suffering. We know the death. But we also know of the resurrection of Jesus. And so we can have confidence. We can have hope. We can have faith that there is more. It's not just a fairy tale. It's not just a pie in the sky thought for the future. It actually is now. A glorious and beautiful, eternal more is always available. Because you see, the good news The greatest and the best good news is that God does win. God triumphs. Love does overcome evil. Why? Well, that's a big question. But brothers and sisters, be confident that we have an even bigger God, so we can always keep the faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor Leah will now come and offer us words of blessing and benediction. Let us pray. Lord, our God, we give you honor. You are the king of glory. You are the Lord Almighty, and we praise you. Jesus, Messiah, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you for your word that guides our lives. We pray for all who are hurting and grieving. We pray for protection for our lives, protection upon our families, protection upon our church family. We pray for guidance for the leaders of our nation to follow God's plan and God's purpose. We now pray, change our hearts, O God. Lead us to follow God's plan of peace and reconciliation for all persons. Precious Lord, take our hands and lead us into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, have faith and follow God's purpose for your life and God's purpose for the world. And be blessed in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom, my friends. Go now in peace. (laughs) 